Welcome home, masters and princesses, to another episode of Made News Network. I am your host, SJ Nix, and I am here today with a great guitar player that I stumbled across on YouTube. This is Javelin Williams. Good morning, Javelin. How you doing, SJ? What's up, everybody? <laughs> right on, man. So uh, I think you know, like anybody else, you start watching stuff on YouTube, and then things just start getting thrown in your face. So I came across you uh, as a, uh, a cover video and it was for time. And I love the song time and they're uh, and not a lot of people do the older stuff. So I'm like, Oh, okay, let me check this out. And I also like the fact that uh, you came at it from the rhythm standpoint, because at heart I'm a rhythm player. So tell us a little bit about your guitar playing. When did you get started in guitar? You know, that. All right, so uh, my guitar playing journey, uh, I think it first began around the time I was like, maybe like 12 or so, 12 or 13. So that was a good uh, 13 or 14 years ago. But um, I had originally started to play guitar um, right-handed. I'm actually cross-dominant. So some things I do left-handed, some things I do right-handed. So um, I did play for about 10 years right-handed on and off, not really consistently. And then about around, let's see, around COVID time, so like 2020, beginning of 2021, I switched to playing left-handed. I felt like it would be more comfortable. So that's where I'm at right now. So about two years or so playing guitar left-handed feels more natural for as comfortable. So it should be what I um, stick with from here on out. Cool. I see your shirt too, man. You had a great left-handed mentor. Oh, yes. <laughs> and one of our favorite guitarists along with, um, you know, Miss Konami and Miku over here as well. Right on. So uh, <clears throat> what got you interested in playing guitar? What, what was that? What was that spark? All right. I'd say I had probably two or three of those moments throughout my like guitar playing journey. The first one was when I was younger. Um, I grew up playing the game Guitar Hero and I listened to mostly like hip hop, R&B, soul music growing up, which I still love to this day. But um, with Guitar Hero, it kind of introduced me to um, a lot of guitar-based genres like rock, roll, metal, you know, things of that nature. And from there, I actually wanted to learn how to play the real guitar. So that's where I, um, where I started when I was about teenage years, first time playing guitar. And um, when I first heard about bandmate, which I'll probably get into a little bit later, that got me reignited. Like when I saw, um, let's see what video was it? It was real existence that was the <laughs> first video that really got me hooked and uh when i saw that one i was like whoa what is going on this is where have i been this is amazing and i'm um, just seeing i remember this one shot in the beginning where i believe it's kind of me she's like head banging and i'm like oh i feel that <laughs> i want to do that and it kind of got me back into playing guitar and kind of taking it a bit more seriously yeah going so, through your channel man i just, i can see that you're uh You've been around for a while. You're not like a new fan. You've got you've got some bandmate stuff going back at least four years. Mm -hmm. And um, <clears throat> yeah, the, so it's like the first time that I heard about bandmate was when I was studying abroad in Japan around let's see, that was around November of 2016. And uh, one of my buddies, who's actually also from the United States, um, he said he had went to SakuraCon earlier that year. And he was like, yeah, there was this band here, like they're called bandmates, like an all woman band. Like they're amazing. I feel like you would love them. And he showed me um, YOLO. So that was the first bandmate video I saw YOLO around November of 2016. And when I first saw it, I was just blown away. I was like, whoa, what's going on? It's like, this is, I've never really seen this before. And he kind of showed me because the name was funny. The name was YOLO. I was like, it's kind of a funny name for a song, but um, it just sounded really good. And it took about a year or so after that for me to refine or uh, rediscover bandmate on my own. And then that's when I saw that um, live video for real existence. And when I saw that, that's, that was it. That was the it moment. I was like, okay, that listen to the album. Okay. What album's out now? Oh, um, world domination just came out. Let me listen to that. Oh, this is great. Oh, I need more of this. And it was like a snowball effect from there. I mean, you've got at least two of the vinyl in the background. So you're, you're obviously you're obviously you're in you're in it. You're not just a casual fan. You're taking the time. You're you're getting you're getting the merch. You're learning the song and stuff. So that's 
that's freaking cool, man. So, oh, see, see, uh, I see a lot of your uh, out or your videos are titled that you're a student. Are you going to mm -hmm. musical school or you consider yourself a student as you learn? Um, I'm actually a student now. Um, I take lessons um, with a guitar teacher by the name of Mark Viola. He's local to this um, Long Island, New York area. And um, what I like about him a lot is that he is a like very open-minded guitarist. He has a lot of similar influences. Like I think he loves um, Zeppelin and Hendrix, but he has such a good um, understanding of many different genres. In fact, um, I think for my next lesson, I actually told him, hey, you know, there's a band called Bandmade that I listen to a lot. I like to study um, their guitarists and um, it'd be cool if we can like, go over a few of those things. So I might actually be able to see how he dissects Bandmade and what he thinks of them and like their guitar style and their approach. But I mean, he's a really cool guy, very laid back. He just loves the music. He's in it for the music, no matter where it comes from, no matter who makes it. So cool. Right on. Yep. Yeah, you're, uh, the, and again, looking at your, some of your videos, man, your influencers are literally all over the road. You've got your Hendrix shirt. You've got um, a Maroon 5 at Lamb of God, <laughs> a bandmate. So, <laughs> that's, I'm like, I'm like, wow, man, that is all over the place. So that's, uh, do you approach your playing? Obviously, you pull all of those influences in. So do you kind of, mm -hmm. do you write your own stuff? Or do you just kind of play what feels good in the moment, what you like? Oh, I do plan on writing my own stuff. Um, right now, my focus is more on like techniques. I'm trying to build a better technique, especially around lead, because I feel like, um, as you alluded to earlier, I am more of a like a rhythm player. Mm -hmm. I do enjoy rhythm more, but I would like to be able to shred every now and then if I can get the skill to be able to do it. But um, yeah, I'm, I do plan on writing my own music. I have like a few test demos, nothing really concrete yet. But um, right now, I'm kind of just trying to absorb all my influences, you know, study them. And I feel like if I can be able to play their stuff top to bottom with little to no mistakes, then I should be able to confidently make my own music as well and play with other musicians. Yeah, I, I was. And again, I was going over your videos this morning. I think was your first one Evergreen? Um, let's see. The first one was probably either Evergreen or I know I did a cover of uh, One and Only. That was around 2018 2019ish maybe yeah that's what those are the one i looked at both of those this morning and since you did those two and then i just saw time recently you've really dialed in your sound you, you you're you're pretty much in parallel with what they're doing on the record that's pretty cool that take you a lot of time to get that <laughs> no pun intended <laughs> um actually not so much i think it's just a combination of um me just trusting the amp that I use and uh, my guitars because um, I do like, like I think bandmates sound, especially around like the Just Bring It era. It's kind of like for me, the epitome of how I would want the sound when I'm playing rock and metal. Mm -hmm. So I just dial in that tone, try not to put too much distortion, but also try to still keep the character of the instrument. Uh, I think in that cover, I use my Stratocaster and that one has some, um, hot reel pickups on it so it's really good for rock and metal but that's why yeah. i think that one in particular it came out pretty good better than i thought actually <laughs> i didn't think it would come out that good it's and looking around man it seems like you got a bunch of guitars that evergreen video look you were using an ibanez it looked like it had emg 81s in it mm -hmm. yes those it 81s okay that's what my 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 old my deep crunchy heavy thrash guitar i've got 81s in it it's just it's just <laughs> That Kirk Hammett, you know, James Hetfield oh, yeah. crunch. How many guitars do you have? Because it seems like every video you're playing something else. All right. Um, so that guitar I have, that's um, that's an Ibanez Iron Label, the RG, pretty much. Um, that one I think is in my bag somewhere. That's my right-handed guitar. For left-handed guitars, uh, let's see. I have this one. This is my Stratocaster. Now, this one, probably my go-to. You can see it here. You know, got some stickers on it. Got the Just Bring It sticker right there. Pro Domination. I'm a Tekken fan, so I have Kuni Mitsu. And it is a reverse headstock. So this is a right-handed neck on a left-handed body with those oh, hot rails okay. pickups that I mentioned earlier. Yeah. Which pretty much make it kind of have like mini humbuckers, more or less. Mm -hmm. Like single coil style humbuckers. And then, um, let's see, I have 
my telly, which I don't think, oh, I might have used that in the Lamb of God video, actually. This one right here. This, in terms of color scheme, I just love. You know, I kind of played with the color scheme and wanted to add that, um, you know, Unseen World yeah. sticker to it. And it kind of plays nicely with the white and the red. Is that one? Now, I do have one base, which I don't think has been in a video yet. But I do have it right here. And if you notice a theme going on, I try to make sure I have at <laughs> least one <laughs> of those stickers on my stuff. You know, just paying respect and homage to Bandmade because they are part of, actually, they're one of the main reasons why I'm trying to take music so seriously right now and why I practice each day, to be honest with you. Okay, so you got a bass. Have you taken a swing at any Mesa stuff? I've tried. Um, one that I've been trying to learn, which seems pretty simple, is um, Don't You Tell Me. So it's pretty straightforward, it looks like. So I'm trying that one. But um, I would love to be able to get not only her picking speed, but be able to slap and like rotate, like tuck the pick in like she does, and just mm. that's awesome. Oh my goodness. <laughs> All right. Um, so sounds like you have the whole catalog. You've obviously got you have got made in Japan if you're doing evergreen and that stuff. I imagine you have everything. Yeah. Um, yeah, so um, let's see. I'm trying to think of what songs I know how to play. If I go through each album, let's see. So made in Japan, I can play evergreen pretty much. Um lead in rhythm. Obviously, for me, rhythm is a little bit better. Um, I do plan on learning that one. Actually, I want to learn all their songs top to bottom, especially the rhythm sections if I can. Uh, Made Japan, I definitely will do that. Um, for, let's see, what's that? that? It's brand New Made, right? Not Brand New Made. It's uh, New Beginning. New Beginning, I can play some of Beauty and the Beast. That was one of the first songs I learned on there. I just love the way the guitar sound on it. And I've barely seen them play it live, like only like in years prior, I've seen that one. Right. So that would be a cool one to learn. Um, I'm probably going to go through their whole discography at some point. So, you know, you might see that on my channel. You might slowly see songs popping up right in succession. But um, you know, most of the stuff I practice is from about, I would say, World Domination. I know a good few songs on there. You saw One and Only. I can play dice rhythm for sure, a little bit of lead. Uh, let's see, dice one and only, domination. And let's see. So that that I'm trying to keep my whole time on here. It's Conqueror. Conqueror. I've played Page before. Actually, I was in, I don't know if you saw the bandmate community Discord, the acoustic series that we had, the Xmas series. You know what I did? I'm not a big Discord guy. I, I, I poke my head in there every once in a while, but uh, I'm more of a Facebook guy. I'm a boomer. Okay. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, so I actually, um, I was part of that, that um, Xmas like, community project. So if you oh. go on that YouTube channel, I was in the Time cover, the acoustic cover, and I was in the Page one as well. So I can play Page, I guess. I know how they play acoustic. It's probably very similar on electric. Um... And what else? Let's see. From that one, I can play Blooming. Almost start to finish for the rhythm. As well as, let's see, is that it? I think that might be it, actually. Oh, Glory. I can play um rhythm as well, more or less. Mm -hmm. And then the newer stuff, like Unseen World, I can do parts of No God. Um, I think that's it for that one. I don't know too many Unseen World songs, because I think at that point, that's where even with Miku's guitar playing, you see like a jump, like from world domination to Conqueror. Like she right. definitely gets command of her rhythm. She always has, but like you see the, the big improvement, even with Konami and in Misa, like they just go from world domination onward. There's just so much going on. It's amazing. It's really good, like stuff to aspire to play. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you've been around long enough to, you, you've actually been present for this evolution or this, you know, where they've, you've watched them in real time get more and more complex and more and more intricate. Same with me. It's been a really cool journey. Oh yeah. And um, also with the newer one, um, with Unleash, that one, uh, let's see. I tried a little bit of um, from now on. That one I want to eventually cover if I can, especially just the rhythm start to finish because even the rhythm sections, um, it really makes me admire Miku's, uh, Miku's on rhythm guitar playing because I feel like 
um, usually lead kind of gets the shine, you know, because you're, you're shredding. It's really cool. It's very, very technical. But with the rhythm, especially the way that Miku seems to approach it, um, it always fills in perfectly. It's almost like they're a one-two punch. And it really stands out when you see them live, as, as you've probably seen them many times live. Miku's, like, guitar, it's very important to the structure of the song. And, in fact, when you take a guitar out, it does sound different. Like, you can hear, especially in the newer songs, like, especially in um, Unleash in particular, that one, she, like, carrying a lot of rhythm. Right. And this one of the songs I do know how to play on that um that album as well. Uh, it's just, it's amazing to see just the progression of how they've improved, like, each one of them over the, what, about 10 years now? It's just, it's incredible. It really inspires me, especially with Miku just being so tenacious, saying, you know what, I would, I've worked at a maid cafe, but, like, I want to make a band. Like, that's, to, to make that decision in itself, you know, take some courage and then right. say, you know what, I'm going to recruit people. I'm going to learn how to play myself. It's like, that's why she is one of my favorite guitarists. Just that tenacity is something that I feel like is really inspirational to anyone of any age, any demographic from anywhere around the world, you know? Awesome. So two part question, favorite right. bandmade song, if you can answer it, and then your favorite one to play that, you know, all right. Favorite bandmade song. Oh, so many. Oh. Uh, <laughs> It's like, I don't have kids, but it's like asking who's your favorite kid. Like, you can't yeah. really have, <laughs> you can answer, but um, I probably would have to say Blooming. All right. Uh, I would say Blooming in terms of studio, live moratorium. That's what I would say. Mm. Um, mm -hmm. and what's, yeah, your favorite, what's your favorite to play? Uh, favorite to play. Let's see. probably either blooming or dice all right yeah because like blooming just the the way it just kicks in that's boom and then they just start playing same thing with dice dice just hits in right with the drums <clears throat> and um dice being one of the one of the bandmate songs that got me hooked because world domination was the first album that i listened to start to finish i believe so just the intro riff and then Oh, the tone in that the tone in that song is just amazing. So, are you? Uh, I know you're taking lessons and stuff. Do you go online and look for tabs that someone has written out, or are you picking all this stuff out? Are you an ear player, basically? Um, a combination of both, actually. Um, some songs I can learn by ear. Like with time, I looked up some like chord diagrams and stuff, and I kind of just did a little bit of, you know, um copying by ear, just listening to it and getting the sense of it. Especially with songs like Evergreen and One and Only, those in particular I did more like listening to because there's not a lot of resources for the older material, right. I've noticed. So a little bit of both, I'd say. All right, cool. Uh, so again, stalking your channel, I saw that you were at uh, that funky New Jersey show. Uh, oh, how yeah. many how many times have you seen Bandmate live? Oh, I've seen them seen them four times. So the first time that I saw them um, was actually their first two New York shows in 2019, and I remember it was like a back to back thing because I missed out on the VIP tickets for the first show, which was like a bigger venue, maybe like a thousand to two thousand people. Mm -hmm. And they had announced an extra date for that tour. So they were going to play in New York two nights, kind of similar to what's happening um, this week. So um, I got the VIP for the second night. So I got to meet them, got the autographed cards. And it was just a really fun experience. And very, it was very cool because I feel like those two shows are very different. Just like with the um, Irving Plaza, with the last U.S. tour and the um, American Dream. Like they're very, they're very different shows. Right. Like with the um, 2019 ones, the first one, as I said, it was like a thousand, thousand people, more of that like classic modern band made vibe. And then the second night was like two to 300 people. It was almost like a, it was like a nightclub. Right. And economy was not more than like five feet away from me. I was in the front of the stage. And like, even if you look at your Instagram from that night, you can see me kind of like rocking out. Economy is like right there. That's how close it was, like a very close experience. It's very different from seeing them with the barricade about 10 to 15 feet out versus seeing them like five feet away from you, just playing up 
close with you. Even Miku went to the crowd. I don't know if you saw that um that video that's back in um that was Mercury Lounge 2019 New York show. She did her um Omaji Nighttime, went into the crowd and yeah. The Bambi fans are really awesome because, like, she's right next to us and everyone's being respectful of her space. You know, we gave her a little circle to stand and she's just standing right next to us yelling, no way, boy, you know. <laughs> I was like, whoa, this is, it's so personal. She's right next to us, she's, you know, looking at us, you know, asking for callbacks, playing around with cameras and stuff, you know. But no, um, I, I know exactly what you're talking about. I, I, I you, <laughs> because the, the, lodge, the lodge room show in L.A., Oh, I was uh, right in the front and the lodge room stage is like a little more than waist high and there's no barricade. So when Misa would step to the front, oh, wow. a little stuff, I'm like, I'm leaning back. So I don't touch it. She's <laughs> like in my face. It's just, just a very personal experience and awesome. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to back up. You said something that I wanted to touch on earlier and sure. Uh, I, I just went in a different direction. You said you studied abroad in Japan. How long were you there? Why were you there? How much Japanese do you speak? All right. So um, I studied abroad there for um, four months. So I did a full uh, full semester. Mm-hmm. And I was studying in Akita, way in the north. Um, definitely cold place. Like we had snow around October, which even in New York, we usually don't get snow in October. So that was different. So that was um, yeah, um, fall of 2019. I took a vacation there. Oh, no, not fall 19. It was uh, fall of 2016. That's when I studied. And in 2019, I took a, a vacation there for about two weeks or so. I just um went to see the places that I didn't get to see originally. So I went to, like, Tokyo. I went back to Tokyo, went back to Akita. Then I went down to, like, Osaka, Kyoto, Nara, Kyogo, and, and um, Hiroshima. So I got to see a little bit more of the places that I hadn't gone to before. And then from March of 2020 to around February of 2021, I actually was teaching English in Japan. I was a like private English teacher. So in terms of how much Japanese I speak, um, I wouldn't say I'm 100% fluent, but I definitely can speak. I can have like regular conversations as long as it's not um, too much vocabulary involved or anything like really specific like weather or politics or something like that right right on man that's that's awesome that i'm impressed and i'm jealous <laughs> oh thank you <laughs> <laughs> so um you touched on a little bit too you talked about uh the shows coming up this week in a couple of days actually the last rock star stuff where they're opening up for them mm-hmm. two nights in new york you go into one of those Yes, I'm at least going to one, possibly two. I'm still undecided for Friday, but I have a ticket to go on Saturday. So I'm going to go to at least one. And I'm really excited, especially because, like, they just played here three three months ago, maybe. Right? And I never thought, like, I saw the announcements for the, um, you know, for Rockville and for the um, Sonic Temple and all that. I was like, okay, you know, Van May's coming back, you know, this summer for a U.S., you know, U.S. festival tour. That's cool. I thought maybe they'll have some shows around that time, you know, May, August. But um, I was really happy to see them in New York and then New Jersey only a few months ago. So when I saw that announcement, I was like, what? And then to see the lineup that they're playing with, the musicians that they're with, that they're opening for, that's like, it's unbelievable. And it's in, they're going to do it, I think it's US only, right? Just um, LA and then New York for those. Yeah, the the two New York and then LA, I'm going to LA. Oh, awesome. So, um, and you, when you said when you were at the, uh, the New York shows in 2019, you were on the rail. Mm-hmm. So what time do you get in line for a show like that? Um, I'm pretty, I'm pretty late. I'm not going to lie. Um, depending on the weather, I know when, with those shows, it was like September. So mm-hmm. being outside for a few hours is nothing but, this time around, um, I don't know how the weather's going to be in L.A. In New York, it's going to be some of the coldest days we've had probably in the last few years. It's going to be historically cold. And I kind of feel bad for um, all the members of the last rock star as well as bandmate because I'm not sure if they've been in weather that cold. It's going to be – let me pull this up. Let's see. Hopefully I'm not still in Celsius, so I'll try to convert to uh, Fahrenheit. <laughs> see here. 
I know the East Coast, um, just the Eastern United States is getting blasted with this weird oh, yeah. weather. Yeah. Here, oh, here it goes. Yep. So let's see. It's going to be really, really cold. So go Fahrenheit. Yep. So on Friday, let's see what we got here. Friday, the high is going to be 32. The low is going to be 8 degrees. <laughs> then Saturday, the high is 27 and the low is 6 degrees. Oof. So, um, yeah, usually I arrive about two hours prior, maybe three, if it's like nicer weather, three to four. Okay. But this time around, I might arrive maybe an hour or so, uh, maybe. But that's like really cold weather. And also, I'm not too sure how packed it will be early on and how much information there is about bandmade opening up. Because I'm looking at the listing and I'm still not really seeing bandmade listed. Mm-hmm. on the um some of the like billings so i don't know if the whole crowd for the last rock star will show up right at 8 p.m or if they'll like pack in slowly right so that might be better for you or me because you know if we're going to see band made and it's not packed in the beginning then you can get closer and be able to see but you never know um yeah it's um uh, i've seen some really dedicated fans i've met some amazing people from around the world especially with the last U.S. tour in particular, mm-hmm. seeing some people, I saw some people at both shows, the New York and the New Jersey show. Um, and some people I saw waiting in line like at midnight, especially with New York, like around Irving Plaza, they were there at like 4 a.m. the night before or 4 a.m. early that morning. Yeah, yeah. And mm-hmm. that's some extreme dedication that I'm not sure if I would do, but I really respect because that is that is just... No, that's pure dedication. That's pure um, that's pure love and admiration for the band, and I'm sure the band sees it. You know, when they come in, um, yeah, that's so. That's something. That's, that's what uh, that's what we over here we call Dawn Patrol, and we're the ones that get there at four or five in the morning. That's this last tour I did. I did L.A. and Dallas. Did both of the birthday shows in line oh. by six a.m. and I said, I strongly suggest you do it someday. It's a freaking party. It is like, <laughs> uh, like I said, we call it Dawn Patrol. It's like bandmade tailgating. People bring snacks and drinks and water. <laughs> we did live streams where we we're doing trivia contests mm-hmm. and name that tune, getting stuff signed, you know, banner signed that we gave to the crowd, all of that stuff. It's part of the experience. So if you get the chance and the weather doesn't suck, there's no way I would do that in single digit weather. No way. <laughs> like, <laughs> I love them, but I mean, there, there's a line. Uh, I think LA, I, I'm going to, I'm going to make you cry right now. I think LA is Ooh. 65 with a low oh. 50. <laughs> oh, I haven't seen weather like that. And even though it's weird because our weather, I don't know if it's climate change or something. Our weather last week, I think earlier this week, it was about 60 degrees almost. So we're going mm-hmm. from that to near zero temperature. So it's kind of like, I do envy that though, LA. Uh, I do I do like California <laughs> weather, especially SoCal. You guys have like that perfect mix of like not too hot, but not too humid. Not too humid. You got the sunshine, but out here it's like, oh, it can go from like being seventy to being thirty in like two days or one day. So, no, nah, like awesome. out here, man, if it's below sixty-five, people are wearing jackets and beanies and they're all bundled up. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man. Um, you know what? Uh, okay. So we know you went to, uh, you went, how, you, so you saw four times at it yeah, like a, four. a lot of different venues. Uh, which one did you like the most? Um, that's, that's also a tough question. Uh, I feel like the first two New York shows were special because they were the first New York shows and playing in a place like this is very aspirational for a lot of international bands. Mm-hmm. Like playing, being able to play in one of the biggest cities in the world. It's just, I could tell when Miku appeared on stage for the first time, she was amped. Her energy was on a thousand. She was so happy. She's like, I'm falling in New York. I was screaming. I was like, I feel that energy. I feel it. And then, um, yeah, I feel like each show has had its own memories. Um, but the first show, you know, being in New York the first time was amazing. The second night, got to meet them. And I remember seeing them walk out. So, a few of us that were there were waving, saying bye to them as they just casually walked out. And I remember Miku had her whole maid outfit on, walking down Lower Manhattan. She's a, 
she's definitely she has like so much confidence. I respect. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the Irving Plaza show from the um, U.S. tour last year, that New York show was really like amazing energy wise. The crowd was really into it. But I feel like something about that New Jersey show. I don't know what it was. If it was just playing in an amusement park, or if it was like you know, getting towards the end of the tour, something about it, or them, you know, riding the roller coaster after the show. Right. It just had a certain energy to it that I can't quite describe. I wouldn't say the crowd was, like, the best crowd I've ever seen in my life, but something about the show was so unique. They were the only, I think the first and only band to play in that mall, just period. That's what um, Miku said on stage. Hmm. Um, it was around Halloween, so you had Akane playing with the pumpkin, walking up to us, or walking around us teasing Miku like each show had its own memories I might have to say the New Jersey show just because of just the environment you know you walk into a mall it was very unique and me being like a 90s kid seeing a whole bunch of Nickelodeon stuff all around us just Nickelodeon memorabilia and stuff and then just seeing bandmade playing (laughs) in a a music (laughs) park and the acoustics were like incredible had its own little echo to it the that's, drums had an extra oh man that's the shocking part to me I, I it seems like that would just be a horrible place to see a show but i've kind of heard that a few times and also you had immediate access to bathrooms and all the food you could possibly eat it wasn't like you were out in the elements hanging out it's awesome oh yeah it, was, it wasn't too cold either um a bit of a drive for me but not that much not more than like an hour but as you said being indoors it wasn't too hot it wasn't too cold the maids got to ride um the roller coaster right after the show like <laughs> and then with that that was funny because um i was actually on the merch line so i do have a video of them on the roller coaster there was like maybe mm, five to ten of us left at the end of the merch line still buying merch and then we just we hear the roller coasters being tested and we're like oh you know it's nighttime so they test you know, they test the roller coasters and then we start hearing some screaming then we look to our side and there we <laughs> see them on the roller coaster going down and i was like all right i gotta grab this and then i got a few shots of them going on it and then as i came around we waved to them we screamed yeah woo. and then you know, they're waving back to us they were excited happy i know it's four i think it was economy one of them was definitely not on the road coaster but um that was just uh, a unique experience for sure but each show had its own like memories you know in terms of people that we interacted with and then just the show itself, having different set lists as well. I like how they switch up the set lists. Yeah, absolutely. All right, we are going to wind this down right now. I got one last question for you, and it's a hard one. All right. Favorite maid? Oh, that's the <laughs> hardest question. It's like a favorite kid. <laughs> um, uh, that's tough. Um, meeting them, I feel like, I don't know if it's just, you know, energies, personalities. Akane's energy is just so genuinely happy to the point where like it's almost contagious right. like one of those um I don't keep saying like one of the first um New York shows when I saw them leaving and I was waving to them I remember each of them you know said bye turned back Psyche was like hey oh thank you so much and then Akane turned around did a full 180 we can't thank you thank you so much mm-hmm. thank you thank you and, like an instant smile right and I was like, yeah, that energy, it might have to be a kind of, but as a guitarist, you know, a rhythm guitarist, kind of got to lean Miku as well. And then her tenacity also is kind of what's keeping me going. Right. I'm kind of split. Uh, split. Uh, that's tough. <laughs> but they're all great. <laughs> right on. All right. Jalen, Javelin, this has been an absolute blast, man. Thank you for talking because I love your enthusiasm for the band. I know people who watch this are going to feel the same way. So. Uh, for those watching right now on YouTube, Javelin Williams, a bunch of covers, not just Manny, some other stuff, great guitar player, active on the Discord. Uh, go out, give him, a, give him a like and follow on his channel. Check him out. Uh, I was impressed. I'm sure you will be too. One last thing you want to say on the way out? Jay, anything you want to say? Uh, I just want to say thank you for having me, SJ. Uh, it's a really good opportunity to be able to speak to you and speak to, you know, someone that's also very active in the um, bandmate community and that has so much history with the band and so much knowledge. And um, I thank you to everyone that's watching this right now or that will watch this in the future. 
fan made really has changed my life. Like as much as that might seem cliche, it really do mean it. They kind of got me reignited into music, which might be the same for many of you out there as well. And I want to also just give my thank you to the band for being who you are, being the amazing musicians that you each are. And I hope that you guys enjoy the next year and many years to come touring. And I hope that you are able to stay warm here in New York when you come here this weekend. All right. Excellent. Well, with that, this has been another episode of Made News Net Network. <laughs> this has been another episode of Made News Network with SJ Nix. Keep an eye on the channel for more stuff coming. There's going to be live streams from uh, LA. If this was after the LA show, you've already seen them, but we're going to be really active for that. And with that, I will say goodbye from Made News Network.